Alrighty, another beautiful winter's day today. <laughs> Bit nasty. Clouds everywhere. Anyway, I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys how to back calibrate your backpack spray because I've been getting heaps and heaps of questions about how to do it. So let's just talk about how to calibrate it. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another Lawn Tips vid. In today's video, you can see that I am not Ben Sims. But, judging by the state of my beautiful lawn back there, I have no idea what I'm doing either. Alrighty, so as I said at the start of the video, we're going to calibrate our backpack spray today. So let's get straight into it, make this a nice quick video for you guys so you can always reference this when you need to know how to do it. So let's just go into the shed, get my knapsack out, and let's make a start. Alrighty, so first thing you're going to need is to get yourself a knapsack or a backpack sprayer. I would recommend that you get a battery powered one just because you're going to get more of an even application. I don't have it at the moment because, you know, I've got this and I can't really justify buying one because I don't have all the money in the world. But this one still works alright for me. But if you do get one of these ones here in particular, one of the pump sprayers, um, you need to make sure you get yourself the right nozzle. So this is the little nozzle that I have here, just a little check valve. It just makes it so you get some constant flow actually going through your actual hose and throughout your nozzle so you don't get uneven sprays. And that's just a little quick cap nozzle just there, which you can take off, easy as that, and you put your little nozzle inside there. That's just a little fan tip nozzle there. There we go, just a little fan tip nozzle. So I like to use those fan tip nozzles for sprays like foliar sprays, anything like that. So most of your liquid fertilizers, Anything like that, you, um, PGR, so your plant growth regulators, I use that nozzle there for those applications. Now if I'm doing something like a pre-emergent or an insecticide spray, that's when I actually get um, a more coarse droplet nozzle. So it actually goes down into the soil a bit more. So depending on what nozzle you have will depend on how you calibrate your sprayer. Because every single nozzle that you use, each different one you use, is going to put out a different volume of water, so you're going to have to actually calibrate it to that nozzle. Now there is a couple of different ways to calibrate it. Today we're just going to mark out a hundred square meters. So I've got four bricks out there. I don't know if you can see them. There's one in the background all that back there. But anyway, I've got four bricks out there. So basically what I'm going to do is, since I've got a hundred square meters, I'm going to calibrate it to a hundred square meters and then just times whatever I calibrate it to, to the size of my yard. So my yard's 350. So however much water I put out over this hundred square meter area, I'm basically going to times that by 3.5 to get the amount of water that I put out over the area. So guess what, calibrating is pretty easy. All you're really calibrating is how much water you're putting out across the whole of your yard. Now, you can also do it a different way. If you don't want to measure out 100 square meters, you can just walk out your whole area, the whole area of your yard, and see how much water you use up over the whole area. I'm just doing this 100 square meter test because you can apply this, say if you're a contractor or something and you're going to different yards all the time, you can actually apply this to every single yard that you go to if you know the size and the area of the area that you're working on. So yeah, do it either either way. Originally when I first did it at home, I just checked out the whole area, but I'll sh I'm just telling you guys both ways so that you can choose which way you want to do it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill up our backpack sprayer or our knapsack all the way to the top just so we can actually see how much water we use when we actually spray out the area that we're going to do. So this is the way we actually calibrate it. So you fill it up all the way and then basically what you do is you just start spraying out across your yard. So we'll start in this corner just, you see, just over there. And basically I'm going to do that brisk walking pace, not brisk sorry, slower than walking pace just a little bit. That's how fast I like to walk when I'm spraying. And we'll go out across this whole area and see how much liquid comes out of the knapsack and that's how our calibration is going to work. So basically, after we've done that, um, yeah, it'll work pretty well. Now I don't know how well you can sit on camera, but basically I am going a little bit slower than walking pace and my actual spray is just sort of nicking the other spray that I did. Now, you need to just be able to see where it is. You can see it pretty easily. I don't know how easily you can see it on camera, but when you're spraying, you should be able to easily see how wide that your spray path actually is. So let's go again. So 
Sometimes it is going to be hard to see exactly where your spray path is. If you do struggle with that, try to do it on a day that's a bit sunnier so you can actually see the reflection of the moisture on the leaf. Otherwise, if you've got lawn strops, you can sometimes follow the lawn strops and they can help you out as well. Yeah, it's, it's something that you'll just get used to over time. Now, if you're a beginner sprayer, you can add blue marker dye to your actual mix so you can see where you're going, but it does obviously stain things and you know, your lawn will look pretty blue for a while, which, you know, if you've got a pretty brown lawn, it's a good way to make your lawn look nice and, nice and green, but anyway. So yeah, I'll get this just close up here so you can see how my overlap actually works. There shouldn't be any overlap, so you see how, how wide it sprays and how close we try to get with our spraying. Now also make sure you keep the nozzle at around knee height, maybe a little bit below. Don't, don't go too close to the ground or don't, don't go too high because you get a bit of spray, spray drift. Man, I'm struggling to speak today because it's a bit cold. You get a bit of spray drift. Um, it's a little bit windy today. I'd recommend you probably don't spray in when it's a little bit windy. Normally if it's above 10 k's, you sort of want to try to, even 5 k's, you want to try to avoid spraying out. So a spray early morning, normally the afternoons are pretty windy. If you have to spray in the afternoon, just make sure that it isn't windy because you're going to get an uneven application and you're going to get some spray drift and you just don't want that, mate. Alrighty, so spraying all done now. So let's see how much liquid I've actually used up in the spray here. Eh? So, so if we have a squeeze, flip it around. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but here's 10 litres just here. And so the mark is at about 11, 11? Yeah, it's about 11 litres I've used, oh, not used, sorry. So I've used 15, <laughs> my mask isn't good today. So I've used four litres to get across 100 square meters. So that's how easy it is to calibrate your actual sprayer. So it only takes me four liters to get across that 100 square meter area. So my yard is 350 square meters, so I'm gonna times four by 3.5, which equals, someone tell me the maths, because I can't think right now. Four, eight, 12, 14. So I basically use a whole knapsack to actually get across my whole yard, which is true because every time I spray, I basically have a tiniest bit left in my sprayer when I actually finish spraying if I fill it up all the way. So from now on, I'll make sure I only put in 14 litres to actually do that. So that's to my walking pace. So make sure you calibrate it to your, uh, to your own and you're probably gonna have a different nozzle to my, myself as well. Because um, my walking pace is gonna be different to yours. So that's why you've got to calibrate it to yourself. So I've just got some liquid iron just down here. So let's talk about how, you, how much you put in. Because people always get mixed up with ratios and how much you need to put in how much water you've got now it's not really a big issue just put in your amount of water and then put in how much chemical is recommended on the actual rate there per 100 square meters so for example I've got this label just here so this label here says 200 mil per 100 square meters so basically we will put in 200 mil to in my example to four liters of water because I figured out I had four liters over 100 square meters now it's got a min nice chemicals won't have this this iron here does have it um, so it's got a minimum dilution so 1 to 20 so one part of your chemical to 20 parts water so if you've got 200 mil you need at least two liters of water to actually go out over your 100 square meters which we are safe we're in that in that boundary because guess what I've got four liters look at that you can actually go a little bit closer if you want to you can go up to 500 mil this product. But basically, that's how it works. So there you go, that's how easy it is in all honesty. Like it's not very hard once you actually know how it works. So don't worry too much about your dilution rate unless they recommend you put a certain amount of water in there to your chemical. So as that one said, one part chemical to 20 parts water. Now if you don't have a backpack sprayer, I highly recommend that you get one because they are awesome for getting a nice even application out over your yard. I've jumped to using my backpack sprayer all the time now instead of using that Hortex sprayer. I just found with the Hortex sprayers, they're good and they, but they chuck out so much water volume so you don't actually get the bang for your buck when you're chemical when you're chucking it out. Now some chemicals like a little bit more water in it like your insecticides. So insecticides are okay to apply with it but I still prefer to use the knapsack actually to do that and then just water it in with some water afterwards. 
as you're supposed to do anyway when you're doing insecticide treatments. Now I'll just quickly add, make sure you always wear the proper PPE when you are applying chemicals. So your gloves, you need glasses. If you're using doing something strong like an insecticide, just wear a spray mask just to be safe. You just want to be careful and also make sure you're wearing boots and long pants and long sleeve shirt as well. Just always make sure you are safe when you're applying these chemicals. So with all these chemicals that we use at home, that I recommend in all these videos, they are pretty safe. I'm not gonna be recommending anything that is like absolutely crazy and that's gonna damage, you know, you or your kids or anything like that or your pets. So generally after you've sprayed most of these products that I recommend on this channel, you can actually walk and let people back on the lawn once it's dried out. I always let my kids out after I've sprayed seaweed secrets and humic acid after it's dried out because it, it is very, very safe. I can promise you that, it is fine. Um, and same with your pets and stuff like that. Now if you're spraying herbicides and that, I like to be a little bit safe when I'm spraying herbicides and I don't let the kids on the lawn until the next day. It's just a personal thing that I like to do. But yeah, all the things I recommend on this channel are safe and they're gonna be fine. And also make sure after you finish spraying, you wash out your knapsack, give it a triple rinse and make sure you flush everything out through the nozzle. Just so that, you know, when you go to put something else in there, it's not gonna be any remnants of that previous chemical in there. Alrighty, well that's about it for this video. Thanks guys so much for watching. If you have any questions on that, ask them below, because I'm sure you will, because there's a lot to take in with that. But once you figure it out, pretty straightforward and pretty simple and, mate, it's pretty cool. I love using knapsack sprays, they're just the bomb. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you learned something new or you enjoyed it, and you have a good week. Pretty sure there's still grass growing down this little bad boy from when I seeded the lawn. Let's have a squeeze. That's so if it comes off. Uh -huh, yes, there is. Still some grass down there. A couple of, oh, the boys have been putting stuff in there again. Oh, some flowers off my camellias. <laughs> anyway, so as your grass can grow nearly anywhere, especially this rye grass. I mean, just look at my garden beds, for example. It's getting shocking. I need to do something about this. Might even do a video on it soon. But there is rye grass everywhere. Just got to get around to doing it. The reason I didn't take it out straight away is because I actually transplanted some of that and actually put it in sections in the lawn where it didn't grow so well. So that's one handy thing. Transplanting.